Apostle Lee Robertson serves as Apostle of Sons of God Embassy in Kinsland, Georgia, USA. Apostle Lee Robertson has the heart of the Father for the emerging generation. He impacts the lives of many through his prayers, prophetic insight, and wisdom. He is known for his teaching and preaching of the Word of God and has witnessed many signs and wonders in his ministry. He also moves in great revelation of the Spirit of God. He has been sent to raise up sons of God, to equip and train them for their God-given assignment. He is truly fulfilling the call on his life by uncovering the gifts that lie within many. Apostle Robertson walks in wisdom beyond his years, and with a humble heart he reaches many lost souls for the kingdom of God. His first love is evangelistic work, but God has used him in various offices and giftings when needed to breathe life in and on those who have lost the very essence of life. God has anointed Apostle Robertson with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he goes about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil, for truly God is with him. He is happily married to Prophetess April, and they have one child. Apostle Lee recently released a book that is taking the body of Christ by storm titled, The Blood, The Other Voice in the Courts of Heaven. Apostle Lee Robertson currently operates under the apostolic covering of his spiritual father, Apostle Francis Miles, founder of Francis Miles International. Let's welcome to the stage, Apostle Lee Robertson. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's bless the Lord in this place. Come on, lift your voice and give Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that. Give Jesus a great big old shout. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. We bless you. We thank you for this moment. Thank you for the blood speaking for us in the courts of heaven. Thank you that all matters have been settled. Now we take authority over that which has already been settled in the heavens. We now command it to manifest in this place today. We thank you for the blood that has already created a path for us to follow. Tonight, we do just that. We walk in total freedom from everything that the adversary has sent. We thank you, Lord. That your hand is upon us. And in Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 You may be seated in heavenly places. God bless you. Come on, let's bless my mom and dad, Apostle Francis and Mama Camilla. Oh, you got to do better than that. That's my mom and daddy. <laughs> amen. We praise God for what God is doing in their lives. Amen. And uh, my beautiful wife is with me. Come on, somebody. Hey. I said my beautiful wife is with me. <laughs> Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. And we do have some, um, uh, we've been teaching on the blood now for two years, nonstop. We uh, was given this incredible revelation in June of 2020. And I can tell you why the corona has lasted so long. Because we have abandoned the blood. Come on, somebody. And so in our house, we've been, we have created, and through the blood and the Holy Ghost, we have made blood banks. I'm going to say that again. We have made blood banks. Blood banks, would you please stand for the people? That's a blood bank. 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 And when you leave this conference, you're going to be a blood bank. Come on, somebody. It's time to take the earth. Come on. The earth is the Lord and the fullness and all that what? Dwell therein. So therefore, if it belongs to your papa, it belongs to you. And so whatever's happening in earth is not God's fault, it's yours. Hello? Come on. Oh, y'all ain't like that, huh? 
You want to blame it on the devil? No, we're not occupying. We're not standing in what God has given us. And we have left the ordinance of the holiness of the blood of Christ. And so, uh, in order to get this revelation, I, I want to start with a word because until we receive this revelation, in fact, tomorrow, my session tomorrow, I'm going to show you that the blood is going to be responsible for bringing the glory that everybody's looking for. The blood is. Hello, somebody. And so, I, I want to start with Revelation 13 and, and 8. Uh, Revelation 13 and 8. I, uh, so that you understand, many of you have not heard my story, but some of you have. So you will see the significance and the power of this because we must understand the blood. And we must graduate into what, what happened to me in the mountain of Sedona in June of 2020. I was invited by the Holy Ghost to do a 30-day consecration. Fasting. Come on and say amen. Come on, say it fasting. Say fasting is not a cursing word. Come on. <laughs> so I was 30 days, and before I left, the night before I left, the Holy Ghost gave me Hebrews 9 and 14 and said, I want you to come before me. I want you to put water in a basin, and I want you to prophetically treat the water like the blood of Christ. And I want you to begin to apply the blood to your conscience. That's the only instructions I had. The rest of it came in the 30 days. So it went from my conscience to my eyes, to my ears, to my mouth, my hands, my heart, and my feet. So, watch this. Hands, right? One, say one. Conscious, that's two. Eyes, how many is that? Ears, mouth. Heart, feet, how many places did Jesus shed his blood? How many places did you just call out? How you going to occupy the seven that the blood was shed at if you can't control these hands, these eyes, these ears, this mouth, and your heart? So in order to maximize the seven areas that, God, that Jesus shed the seven blood, you must first get this intact, your hands. Your conscience. Did you know that your conscience is your spiritual library? That it holds the pain that your heart collects. Your conscience. So the pain that has not been healed, when it runs up on someone that's similar to the one that created that pain, that person checks out that book in your conscience and trigger that pain. And you have to go through that all over again because your conscience was not clear. But the blood is going to clean that. Come on and say amen. amen. So Revelation 13 and 8 says, that, uh, we, we're reading from the New Living Translation. It says, all, and all the people who belong to the world worship the beast. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life. That belongs to the what? Who was what? When? So in order for us to understand the power of the blood, we must understand this scripture. So when was the lamb slain? Before the world was made. Is that right? Is that right? And so I was led to Sedona, Arizona, in the mountains of Sedona. And there I was there for 30 days. And if you know anything about Sedona, it is surrounded by red rocks. And so the Lord began to minister to me. I did not know what he was up to. He just told me what to do. And so I'm surrounded by red rocks. And so one day the Lord spoke to me and said, come outside. I went outside and began to look around. And all of a sudden this, this breeze broke out and began to blow. And then dust came from, from out of the middle of the earth and began to sit in front of me. And the Lord said, how did I create man? And I said, from the dust. And he says, yes. And so he said to me, he says, now, what does Adam name means? And I said, Adam. And I knew from previous study that Adam name means red man. His name means what? Red man. 
I'm surrounded by red rocks. Red man. He says, now look at your address. I looked at my address. My address was 125 Sedona Drive, Sedona Avenue. 125 in Hebrew means reddish. Do you think God was trying to say something? God says, I am going to show you a mystery that the body of Christ has gotten away from. He says, it's time for the blood to return to the body of Christ. And as I begin to, to in, in, begin to study this, I found out something that blew me away. That the priest has several duties. And one of their duties was that they had to keep the blood from becoming stiff. And they would stir the blood. Do I have anybody here ready to stir the blood? This act would keep the blood from getting stiff. And the Holy Spirit said to me, the body of Christ have let the blood become stiff. I need my house to awaken the blood. So I come, hello somebody. I come to Tennessee to find those that's ready to awaken the blood. Is there anybody in the house ready to awaken the blood? And so if you feel like you were the one, I want you to stand and prophetically do what I'm doing and say, I would awaken the blood in my house, in my lineage. Come on, come on, come on. Why? Because if the priest did that in the Old Testament, Revelation 5 and 10 says he has made us into our God kings and priests. Now it's time for these priests that's in this earth to awaken the blood to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you may be seated. Revelation 13 and 8 says, watch this, because this, this is very powerful. He says, he did this before the world was, because I want you to see how powerful the blood is. He did this, the, the, even God himself obeyed the law of the blood. And I'm going to show you in just a minute. If Revelation in 13 and 8 is correct, and it is, that, that means that the lamb was slain before the foundation. That means that the, the blood was shed in eternity. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. That means that the blood was shed when? In eternity. So the blood did not get its power at Calvary. The blood got its power in eternity. So when Jesus showed up on Calvary, that's time receiving what eternity had already done. So therefore, when Jesus came here in 19, John, John 19, and, the, and when the soldier pierced him in the side, it's now time receiving what eternity was carrying. And so therefore, why is that important? Because now what happened in eternity has authority over it, what's in time. So whatever happened in time now lost its, its strength, its power, and its endurance. So therefore, when Calvary happened, the blood says, I now am issuing an expiration date to your cancer, to your lupus, to your diabetes, to your high blood pressure. Come on, say amen. To your poverty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you must understand that the power of the blood did not happen at Calvary. It happened in eternity. So that means that watch God, even, even God obeyed the law of the blood. So Revelation 13 and 8, he slain the, the lamb. The blood is now suspended in eternity. He goes and create earth. That means that earth itself came through the blood. Oh, 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 I'm going to wake up some people in just a minute. That means that the earth itself came what? Through the blood. So, now watch this. So, when the earth came through the blood, Genesis chapter 1 says that God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 2 says that the earth was what? With a void. Is that right? It was what? Void. Right? I, how many of y'all remember back in the day when somebody wrote a bad check, they wrote void on it? They would embarrass them by hanging it on the cash register. Remember that? Hello. That means that what? The check was what? No good. But who had authority to devoid, to void what God created? 
<laughs> that means that the earth was void but not destroyed. The reason the earth was not destroyed is because the earth came through the blood. So the enemy can, can, can cause, cause, cause chaos and darkness, but he couldn't destroy it. So even God showed up in verse number three and woke up earth out of its void state. And God says, light be. In other words, what you tried to void, you couldn't because my blood held it in suspense. I come to prophesy to somebody in here today that whatever the enemy trying to void in your life, the blood is saying today that I am here to say, light be. Oh, come on, somebody. Are you hearing this? So even God, what, obeyed the law of the blood, and he goes and speak. He don't even speak to the earth. He speaks to the blood, because in the blood is the light of God. That word light translate in Hebrew means life. So God wasn't calling for light. He was calling for life. Because in his blood is his life. Oh, you need some help. Leviticus 17, 11 says, life of the flesh is in the one blood. And I have given it upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. It is the blood that makes an atonement. So if that blood in Leviticus 17 and 11 cleanse you from a fallen state of a lamb, what in the world would the blood of Jesus Christ do who bears the life of the Father? <laughs> Come on, are you seeing this? So watch this. He, Exodus 12 and 7. Exodus 12 and 7. Y'all all right with me? Y'all all right with me? Yeah, yeah, deep. Yeah, this fella ain't gonna make it. Hello. Are you with me? So, thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Okay. Exodus 12 and 7. Now watch. Okay, now watch because you have to understand that if the blood draws its power from eternity, that means that before time even started, the blood was already speaking. Hebrews 12 and 24, and to Jesus, the mediator of the what? New covenant. And to the sprinkling of the blood, which speaketh better things than that of Abel. So then the blood voice didn't start in Hebrews 12 and 24. The blood voice started in Genesis 1 and 26. Let us. Oh. <laughs> Let us. So the blood. See, you, you said the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is the us. But you forgot the blood because Adam had the blood of God. He did not have the blood of a creature. He did not have the blood of a sheep. He did not have the blood of a beast. He had the blood of the Father. He was valuable in the earth because he had the blood of the Father. And so therefore, when, it, when Genesis 1 and 26 says, let us, the blood was there speaking on your behalf. So before the doctor voice say you have cancer, the blood already said in eternity, you don't. So when the, are you hearing what I'm saying? So when the enemy said, I'm going to murder your child, in eternity the blood says, by his stripes. He heals hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you that the blood was already speaking. Woo! Somebody tell them, say the blood, the blood. Say the blood, the blood. If God used the blood to revive the earth. <laughs> are you in this building with me? Am I Okay. So even God used the blood to revive the earth when the enemy tried to what? Void it. And when he tried to what? Bring darkness. God just simply showed up and said, like be. And earth obeyed not because so much because of the power of God, but because of the blood he had already shed. 
it can't die. This is why there's this this is why there's laws in effect when animals get in trouble when they're close to extinction. Are you hear what I'm saying? When they're really close to being extinct. Are you hear what I'm saying? There's a law that takes the animal and put them in a protected place and they keep them from going out of what extent? Are you hear what I'm saying? Now you think man doing that, but no, that's the blood making sure that life that God created would never disappear on this planet. So how in the world you think that the devil got enough power to wipe you out? The devil is a liar. The blood says, I have come to set the captive free. I have come to redeem you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The blood don't have time for discussion. It has already made its decision. You shall overcome. Woo, give me somebody ready for the blood in this house. Give me somebody ready to wake up something, ready to stir something, ready to destroy something. Come on, say, I wish a devil would. Come on and say amen. Say it. Say, I wish a devil would. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, when I was in the mountain, the blood, I was in, in prayer and the Holy Spirit came in. Now, the blood made its entrance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The blood made its entrance in that place. And when the blood came in, the whole house, you're not listening to me. The whole house was occupied by the presence of the blood. And the Holy Spirit said these words to me. Y'all have diminished the blood to just cleansing your sin. I said, what do you mean? And the Holy Spirit said to me, the blood has a higher priority. I said, what's that? He said, the blood has come to give you the life of the Father. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? See, let me show, Leviticus 17 11 says that the life of the flesh is what? In the blood, right? Let me show you the first Exodus, Lord help me, Exodus 12, verse 7. Okay? I'm going to read verse 7, and I'm going to read verse 12, and I'm going to read verse 14. Watch this. Exodus 12, 7. They are to take some of the blood. And smear it on the side and the top of the door frames of the houses where they eat. Right? The animal. Right? 12 says, on that night I will pass through. Now, you, I want you to see something. Now, in there, I, I cut it short because he said, once you put the blood on, go in the house. Right? And don't come out. Right? Are you with me? Now. <laughs> go what? In the house. Is that right? Stay in the house. Don't come out. Stay in the blood. You ain't in. Stay. You ain't. Stay in the blood. Don't come out of the blood and you won't be touched by death. Am I at the wrong house? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? Watch this. Watch because you need to see this. This is the this is the last plague that the children of Israel face. It is the tenth plague. Is that right? Isn't it ironic that the tenth plague is death? Isn't it ironic that they about to come out and the church is about to be birthed? You you ain't you ain't. Let me try this side. Uh, you, you see, so the church is about to come out. So this is the sh the church. This is the shadow, the type of the church. About to come out, about to come out, about to come out. But before they can come out, they got to go in. You can't, you can't have breakthrough until you get in the blood. You don't have no authority to act for no breakthrough if you have not been in the blood. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? So the church goes what? In first. And then death passed by. So that means that the first miracle, the first breakthrough that the church had was over death. I come to stir up about 10. I don't need but 10 of y'all. I don't need, I don't need, I, don't, I come to get about 10 of y'all to say, I'm, about, I, I'm not going to die. I don't have time to die. I, I don't have, I got better things to do than to die. You ain't in this building with me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus' blood is so strong that when death comes, the only thing it can do is sting. Ah! That means that death is only an act 
motivation to those that's get ready to fellowship with the blood of Jesus. That means that when death comes, all they do is like a gnat. And you say, you know what? I'm tired of this thing coming around me. You know what? In fact, just leave my whole family. Lead, matter of fact, don't just leave my family. Leave my neighborhood. I claim everybody in my neighborhood. I claim everybody in my state. Is there anybody in here that's ready to take the blood of Jesus? Ah, Jesus. Can I tell you what the Holy Ghost told me? The Holy Ghost said, tell them at the conference that I'm releasing the blood over their life and many of them are escaping premature death. You ain't in this building with me. You can ready to live a long life. You can ready to live a healthy life. You can ready to live a prosperous life. You can ready to live a God-driven life. Are you hear what I'm saying? And wherever you go, life going to follow you. And people going to ask, what have you done? And you just going to simply say, it's the Am I making sense to anybody? You die by choice. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. You die by choice. My, my wife and I, we was raised uh, uh, like, uh, like uh, 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 sister, uh, Elder Linda. We was raised, it's two men has been valuable in our life. Dad and another man, Apostle Richard Clark, who was responsible for me being crazy. It's not my fault. He told me this story once. He preaches a message called life. And in this life message, he tells this story. He said this man got shot 38 times in his chest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Y'all not talking to me. And so he was in the ambulance, and they say he was mummering something, but they couldn't make out what he was saying because blood was coming out of his mouth, and they couldn't make out what he was saying. So they said that one of the guys got so close to his ear, and they heard him say, I should live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. You ain't in here. I should live and not die. You, uh, oh, give me somebody in here that understand that the blood says you shall live Tell somebody, I ain't going nowhere. I got work to do. I got work to do. I got places to go. I got nations to overturn. I got governments to fix. Shout in this house. Uh, oh, I need somebody stirring. I need some stirring. I need some stirs. I need some stirs. Somebody wake up the blood. So watch me now. So they finally make, mom, they finally make it to the, to the, to the hospital. They roll him in. Now the man was just murmuring, I should live and not die. You're not listening to me. See, you have to understand, the book of Psalms says that one man has died for them all. So who you dying for? So they get him in there. They roll him in the emergency room. They open his chest. There is no evidence of bullets or anything. The man get off the stretcher and say, excuse me, I got to go to work. I prophesy that there's about 50 y'all in here that you're going to just look at them and say, excuse me. You came for my mama. You came for my daddy. You came for my granddaddy. The bus stops here tonight. I have the life of the blood. Shout yes! Come on! The blood of Jesus! So, are, are you hear what I'm saying? 
Listen, I'm, this is not something I'm just making. I'm telling you, we've been in fellowship with the blood for two years. We've seen all manner of miracles. We've seen cancer dissolve. We seem homosexual turn their life over. You ain't listening to me. I'm here to prophesy that the blood is greater than just washing your sins away. The blood wants this nation. It wants this government. It wants the White House. It wants the Senate. It wants Congress. It wants the Supreme Court. I ain't... Give me somebody here that want the blood to move like a tidal wave. So the first miracle that the church received was what? Life. And they in the Old Testament. So what made the blood? I asked the Lord, because I'm, I'm, I'm one of these nosy preachers. I got to know. So I said... I said, now, I know, because if you know that when Adam fell, everything fell, right? Now, the, the lamb, even though it was a, a lamb kept aside without spot and blemish, it still had iniquity in it. <laughs> it still had what? Iniquity. So I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you still got a problem. He said, what's your problem? I said, that blood had iniquity. So how did that blood override death who had legal right to kill everybody he said you don't understand when I spoke my word went in that blood and where will my word go no iniquity cannot buy you ain't in this building so in the Old Testament when they put the blood on their house and they went in and the word of God mixed with the blood that was falling in a fallen state saved the lives of over a hundred million people that left out with over a hundred million dollars I come to prophesy to you in this place today that you're not just gonna avoid death you're just not gonna step over death you're about to get the prosperity that's owed to you because when they left they left with a hundred million dollars they left with favor. That means that favor is in the blood. Can I, just, I, can I read it? Because I, I, I know I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't got no time. For, verse 14. Now watch this now. 14. This is a prophetic act because you need to see this. 14 says, this is a day to remember. This is a day what? To remember. Each year, each year, are you in this building with me? Each year, from what? So then you got to admit that there was a generation that was not born when they put the blood up. Is that right? <laughs> right? Is that right? So then that generation that wasn't born when they came out through the blood, before they crossed over the Jordan, Joshua turned around and, and put down 12 stones. And he says, these stones will remind them of how we came out. The problem with our generation, you ain't telling your children nothing. You letting them find out stuff at the school. You letting them find out stuff at the playground. You letting them find out stuff in the street. You need to tell them that how you came out was by the blood and the blood is the only thing gonna keep us out shout in this place uh, watch okay all right now one so are y'all okay with me so then my, my last verse is 12 24 okay and we, we got to pray because I want to release this life over you is that okay am I good okay so because there are 14 laws in the blood. How many? 14. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 14. You know what the first law is? The law of life. The law of life. You die because you choose to. You heard the woman of God says Moses was 120. He was so rich with life that God eulogized his funeral. He's a bad man. You know how bad you got to be for God? <laughs> for God to do your eulogy. That's saying, you know what the statement that God saying? God says only a God can bury a God. Oh, don't look at me cross-eyed. 
Jesus said it is written, know ye not that ye are. See, your problem is you think it was a man bleeding on the cross. No, 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 no. You think that was a man on the cross. That was not a man. That was a God. The Bible said it was God in Christ reconciling the world back unto him. So it was God on the cross bleeding for another God. He came to get you and restore you back to your proper place. He's not taking you to heaven. You didn't fall from heaven. You fell from your godly position. And the blood is the only thing that restores you back to your godly position. You need the blood DNA that you can walk like God in the earth and everything in the earth must obey you because you have the lineage of God. Law 2 is the lineage. I'm getting ready for the conference. I'm up fellowshipping. Because I don't graduate from prayer to fellowship. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. Thank you. See, you have to understand. To unlock this, you're going to have to enter into fellowship. Prayer is cute. But the problem with praying is y'all talk too much. You talking and God sitting there going, when, when, have you ever had somebody ask you for advice and they over talk you while you trying to give them advice? You know what fellowship does? Write this down. Put it somewhere. You know what fellowship does? This is my new upcoming book. I won't charge you a thing. Fellowship, the spirit that God sends to rip you and rob you of seeking for shortcuts to God. Fellowship moves you from shortcuts. <laughs> when, when Elder Linda put those chairs up there, I about cried. Because when I was in the mountain, oh, my little Holy Ghost self just knew I wasn't religious. <laughs> I prided myself not being religious. I did all this praying and seeking God. And one morning, the Holy Spirit woke me up. And at four something in the morning, I jumped up, just amp, ready. And he said, yeah, today is the day, son of man. I said, ooh, oh, we're going to travel to the heavens. I'm going to see some glorious things. Boy, I was amp. I ran in there, took me a shower, everything. And I come back out, had to put my shorts on. I'm ready to go. And the Holy Spirit said, grab the mop. <laughs> mop? Do you know my wife? If she see me mopping here and don't mop at home, I ain't coming home. <laughs> so he said to me, grab the mop and mop this whole place. I started mopping from the shower. Got in the front. <laughs> I get out to the front. And I get to this spot on the floor. And I'm mopping. The spot won't move. You ain't talking to me. I, oh, I put that man in there. The spot don't move. I put more man, nothing. Holy Spirit said, go get more cleaning. I go back, get the bleach. I get some more stuff. I down there, and, I, and the spot move. And the Holy Spirit says, that's what the blood does. But you can you cannot expect spot and blemishes to move on one apply. Because there's some spots in your soul. You ain't talking to me. There's some spots in your conscience. There's some spots in your heart that you're going to have to fellowship with the blood to get those spots out. And they are aggravating. I wish I had somebody here going to tell the truth. But see, you think just for pleading the blood one time, it's going to move. But you know that thing ain't gone. That thing's still there. Why? Because you have not fellowship. You prayed, but you have not fellowship. See, you can pray, but don't enter into fellowship. But you can never fellowship but not pray. 
Are you hear what I'm saying? So that's why when Linda was talking, watch this. Because see, prayer is us waiting to hear the Father's voice. But fellowship is where we wait for his, parent, his presence to make his appearance. Oh, God, give me somebody here that's ready to wait on the Lord. Prayer is where we will experience God's deliverance. Fellowship is where the aroma of that deliverance draws his presence. Prayer is where you tend to talk all the time. Fellowship is where his presence do the speaking. <laughs> Prayer is where you seek God's gift and anointing. Fellowship is where we offer him what he created for exchange for why he created us. We are going to unlock this power of the blood. We're going to enter into fellowship. Why? Because the first thing Adam had in the garden was not gifts of the spirit. There was no tongue talking. There was no seeing in the spirit. There was no nine gifts. He had fellowship. Why? Because fellowship outweighs gift. God is aggravated with these gifted people going everywhere but ain't carrying his presence. Got you jumping off emotions and you sending seed and all they did was prophesy your street name. I need more than that. Don't street. Is somebody coming on my street? What should I look for? And I don't need no after prophet to show up after I don't went through hell and high water. And then you want to show up and say, the Lord showed me. Well, let me black your eyes so you won't see nothing now. I need you to tell me before I get in trouble. Shout in this house. Man of God, there's a fellowship coming. There's a fellowship coming. There's a fellowship. Fellowship releases the hunger, the intensity that you have for the presence of God. I don't want nothing, Lord. I just come to see. I want to sit in your presence. You ain't got to say nothing. Just let me have the pleasure of sitting here and just, just basking in your presence. Are you hear what I'm saying? We'll get ready to step into what Peter carried, where his shadow, his shadow was healing people. That is the presence of God. Where you ain't no laying hands. It's because you're so full of his presence that you, when you go to Walmart, people start falling out. People start getting delivered. People start giving their life over to Jesus Christ. We need people to fellowship and stop praying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so watch this now. Okay? So. Now, Jesus shows up. John 19, he shows up. Watch this. Now, isn't it ironic that, that God in eternity shed the blood? Is that right? Right? So, why did, you have to think kingdom. You, you, you can't think church because you're going to miss the blood. You hear what I'm saying? Now, so, now, when, when Corona hit, the whole world was painted a certain color. Can you tell me what color that was? Red. Say it again. Red. Say it again. Red. Do you wonder why Corona had to bear the color red? It was God trying to tell the lazy church, you're not using the blood. I was in prayer and fellowship, and the Holy Spirit said to me, you see how corona covered the earth? I said, yes. He said, get ready. He says, I'm getting ready to commission people, and they're going to come into fellowship with the blood, and we're going to cover the whole earth with the blood of Christ. You're going to see people in the Netherlands getting saved. It's going to be outbreaks in Australia. It's going to be outbreaks in Germany. It's going to be outbreaks in all in Africa, and they're going to be saying, something drew me out. Something pulled me away from the alcohol something pulled me away from suicide it was the blood it was the blood it was the blood it was the blood Are you, who hearing this and so then he began to show me uh, he says I want to show you something so he says to me he said Adam names me red man so he takes the man 
who's prophetically pronouncing that he's covered in the blood. Is that right? And he put him in his garden. The garden is created on the side. The man is created outside the garden. But the man has the blood. The garden is God's presence. The man has God's blood. He can only take you as far in his presence as how much blood you are willing to put on your life. He took the man who is his blood and put him in his presence and said, you can freely eat. You know what's getting ready to happen over the next three years? People that's getting ready to go into fellowship with the blood. You're going to freely eat in trees in God that men have not eaten before. You're going to climb in the heavenlies. You're going to come down with a transformation word. You ain't going to have to say but three words. And it's going to be an outbreak. Change, shackles, addictions going to be broken. You ain't here. Life going to be saved. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, yes, cities, states going to come to God one by one. And they're going to say something. Somebody on that street right there is pleading the blood. Somebody in that street right there is applying the blood. Somebody in that state right there says they're not here, devil. You're not coming here. I come here with the blood of Jesus. I come to take back everything that you have stolen. That soul, that soul, that soul, that soul, that community shout yes in this blood. It's about to be a bloodbath. Look at somebody say, it's about to be a bloodbath. I feel the presence of the blood. It's about to be a bloodbath. Tell somebody to say, I'm going to be responsible too. Because I'm about to go into fellowship. So, two weeks ago, I'm preparing for the conference. And I begin to pray. And the Holy Spirit says, come up, I want to show you something. So I go up and I lay back down. And the father comes in. And he sits down in front of me, Linda. And he crosses his legs as if it was effortless. And he said these words to me, son, something is coming. He said, tell everybody to plead the blood over their life, over their children, over their finances, over their businesses. And as soon as he said that, I went into this vision and I saw earth. It's as if something, a bomb hit it and it was dry everywhere. But then I saw people. I saw people over there and I saw people here and it was all over. But you could tell the vast difference between those that had the blood on their forehead. It was like they never went through the storm. They still had all their stuff. They still had all their joy. They still was intact. You ain't in this building with me. I'm here to prophesy to those that's in this house tonight. You need to stop fellowshipping with the blood. You need to bring the blood in, in your conversation. You don't need to leave the house. You don't need to let your children leave the house. You need to cover your business. You need to cover your finances. Everything get covered in in the blood oh the blood the blood is here the blood is here come on come on to the altar the blood is here the blood is here come on to the altar the blood is here the blood is here the blood is here by about so called by yo see come on yeah see Sikadabo robo, sikadabo, sikadabo, si, sikadabo, sikadabo, si, kadabo, si, si, tabababa, yo, do, o, ko, robo, sikadabo, ba. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. Say, blood of Christ. Today, I enter into your fellowship. Say, blood of Christ. Listen to me very carefully. Where, where is uh, where's that young man? Uh, lift your hands. The blood is getting ready to come upon you. Just get ready, okay? Listen to me. When it comes, 
I need you, I need you to hear this because you, for those of you that's getting ready to enter into this fellowship, and some of you started, but you stopped. You need to reunite with the fellowship of the blood. When you reunite, my God, the healing of the blood of Christ is on the I see you. See God, look at the blood. Look at the blood. Look at the blood. Yes, my 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 Touch the blood, the blood, the blood. Come, come closer, sir. Come closer. I command every organ, every tissue. I command life. I command life. From, my God, I command life from the blood of Christ. Yeah, life, 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 life. The blood, the life of blood is coming down. The life of blood is coming down. The life of blood is coming down. Say blood of Christ. I enter into your fellowship. A fellowship with your life. Your redemption. Your peace. Your reconciliation. Your cleansing, your washing. I receive now. Now receive it. Turn around and stretch your hands towards the people who are watching. We have got close to 400 people live streaming. The Lord said that the blood needs to go in the clouds and touch people. There's a woman with stomach cancer watching me and God is healing you. Shanda, and I think your name is Priscilla. I was in New Jersey two weeks ago with my wife when, when a girl said, she, girl said they, they brought a woman that had to really testify. She said, we are watching you on, your, we are watching you on television. And then you stop and then you, you called out my mother. Exact condition and immediately she began to puke and the disease left her completely. So you see, in the cloud, God is moving. So this Priscilla lady, stomach cancer, God is healing you. Let's presence at the blood of Christ who begin to set people free or in cyberspace. Lord, we release the power of the blood of Yeshua in every situation represented by brothers and sisters who we cannot see but are connected to us in the clouds. The blood invades the clouds right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless them. We send the power of God into their life in Jesus' mighty name. Give God a shout in the house for all that he has done today. Give God a shout.